Ashley Blade never dreamed of becoming a beauty queen. The 21-year-old amateur model and part-time tutor fantasized about being a movie star or the next Glee triple threat, and posted her resume on the casting networking site GaCast in hopes that Hollywood might call. But when recruitment associate for Miss California USA, the splashier state franchise in Donald Trump's Miss Universe pageant ecosystem, sent Ashley a message in November 2012 expressing interest in scheduling the meeting, she responded right away. I didn't expect them to pick me in a million years, Ashley said. Then they did. I thought it was the start of my dreams coming true. What happened next was more like a nightmare. Miss USA competitors get a bad rap. They're known for being party girls tear up honor. Miss USA 2006 porn stars Melissa King, Miss Delaware Teen USA 2013 and home Mothby's Carrie Prejean, former Miss California USA 2009 and Miss USA 2009 first runner-up. But our investigation found that the people behind the scenes, not the camera-ready women they hide behind, are the ones truly worthy of a spotlight. Some of the men who recruit and run the organization's lucrative pageants are scam artists with lengthy track records of manipulating desperate clients with false promises of fame. Chasing the dream can be pricey, but sources told us it's possible to pay up with sexual favors. MU co owner Donald Trump has made his name milking controversy for cash, but it's hard to imagine that even he would advocate profiting off the activities some high-level Miss USA representatives have been involved with for years. State directors and recruiters sign contracts promising to uphold the outstanding reputation and image of the Miss Universe organization MUO but no one's watching to make sure they actually comply. And when power runs unchecked, things can sour faster than a runner-up's fake smile. Last December, millions of people, one billion, according to Trump, in approximately 190 countries watched Rhode Island President Olivia Culpo beat out 88 other beauty queens to become Miss Universe. It was the organization's most watched competition since 2008. The day before the pageant aired, the judge awarded the MUO $5 million in damages against ex Miss Pennsylvania Sheen Mon in over her claims that the Miss USA pageant was rigged. We are pleased that the integrity of the Miss USA pageant remains intact, MUO President Paula Sugart said in a statement. We were always confident in what the outcome would be as the truth was on our side. Confidence aside, the MUO is used to controversy. That's why the Miss America pageant is so averse to being confused with its smutier sister that it rather brusquely explains the differences between the two pageants on its website's fact. The distinction was established over half a century ago, when Yoland Betbist, a convent girl from Alabama, refused to pose for swimsuit photos after winning the 1951 Miss America title. The swimsuit sponsor retaliated by launching the Miss USA and Miss Universe pageants as competitors, and effective product promotion tools. Generations later, the foil remains. One 2013 Miss America hopeful recently told Marie Claire that she considered the crown a stepping stone on the way to becoming a state governor. Miss America girls want to be doctors and lawyers, 2000 for Miss USA Shandy Finnessy once told Fox and Friends. While Miss USA girls want to grow up to be Victoria's secret models, Trump, who bought the MUO in 1996 and co-owns it with NBC Universal, clearly has no problem with the pageant's reputation. Ratings have been terrific, Trump told The Insider in 2010 after controversy arose over official competition photos of lingerie-clad contestants rolling around in bed. They are a little bit sexy but I'll tell you what, everybody's watching so I have no problems with it but no one's paying attention to what happens behind the scenes. After being contacted by a Miss California USA recruiter, Ashley rushed to fill out an online application. She was soon invited to an interview session with pageant recruiter Domingo Rodriguez at a Clarion Hotel near her apartment in Tracy, the drag city bordered by three interstate highways on the outskirts of the Bay Area. She and handful of other girls in attendance vying for spots in younger sister pageant Miss California Teen USA watched a promotional video and then had one-on-one -on -one interviews with Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a middle-aged smooth talker, told Ashley he would help her find sponsors when she said she couldn't afford the pageant's initial and non-refundable $895 deposit fee. If Ashley was interested in other paid modeling jobs, and she was, yes, of course, Rodriguez knew of a magazine in Miami that needed a cover model. In a follow-up email to Ashlett sent a few days later, Rodriguez reiterated the magazine opportunity and remained encouraging.
We can meet sometime in the future if you like to take you sick to the next level, he wrote. Keep smiling. The next day, he texted Ashley, saying she should feel free to contact him on his cell if it was easier than email. Ashley was excited but unsettled by Rodriguez's fervent enthusiasm. Her baby-faced features and skinny 5A frame were more fitting for an American apparel billboard than a national beauty pageant. But when she called the phone number listed on the pageant's website and reached K to Productions, the company that produces Miss California USA, the receptionist confirmed that Rodriguez was indeed employed by K to Productions' official recruitment and marketing arm, Chase the Crown. Feeling reassured, Ashley texted Rodriguez back to learn more. Rodriguez instructed Ashley to email modeling photos to ifinblink at aol.com. After she sent for page-rated photos, a woman who identified herself as Jasmine Mitchell of Life Talent Limited asked Ashley what type of modeling slash acting she would be open to, specifying that our agency does G to X-rated modeling assignments. Ashley politely said she would prefer only implied nudity and referenced her childhood modeling work with O.S.H. Kosh Bigosh. Rodriguez also asked Ashley to send him a photo to show his magazine contacts, so she texted him one of herself in a pink bikini, posing against a living room couch. Is there anything else I can do in the meantime? She texted. I would love the chance to model for pretty much any assignment. Five minutes later, Rodriguez responded. The magazine wanted her on the cover and she'd pocket 80% of the paycheck, but they had to meet in person to discuss the terms of the agreement. Ashley thought it was odd that he couldn't discuss the contract over Skype, but agreed to meet him at a Starbucks in Tracy, Miss California USA had confirmed he was legit and Rodriguez had told her via text that there is an interest we need to sell it now. In the days before the meeting, Rodriguez sent her inspirational texts, keep smiling visualize success. When the two met later that week, Rodriguez showed up without any paperwork and asked Ashley to get inside his car. She felt uncomfortable but got inside. He was an official Miss USA recruiter, after all, and she had come this far. Once the doors were closed, Rodriguez told Ashley that the agreement wasn't written. It was oral. Basically, I had to give him head and other sexual favors if I wanted to be on the cover of the magazine, Ashley said. Rodriguez explained that this was simply the fast track that 90% of all successful actors and models took to the top. If she performed additional sexual favors for the powerful men on the modeling circuit, her path to fame would be guaranteed. Ashley said Rodriguez asked her to prove herself right there in the Starbucks parking lot. When she looked upset, he let her out of the car and told her to think it over. Instead, she spoke with an officer at the Tracy Police Department the very next day. But because Rodriguez hadn't actually forced her to go down on him, the incident was a civil matter, not a criminal one. Next. Ashley contacted Keith Lewis, the state director for Miss California USA and Miss California Teen USA and co-director of K2 Productions, the company that produces the pageants and vouched for Rodriguez. Lewis told Ashley in an email that he was horrified by her experience and would remedy the situation, but advised her to keep her story under wraps to prevent the possibility of tainting the outcome. Whether he was referring to the outcome of the pageant, which he encouraged Ashley to still apply for or the investigation was unclear. Two days later, Lewis wrote to Ashley that K2S official recruitment company, Chase the Crown, had agreed to relieve Rodriguez of his recruiting responsibilities. Lewis told her he had spoken at length to the detective assigned to Ashley's complaint, but unfortunately, he wrote, neither the police nor he would be able to follow up any further. Lewis was sympathetic, and he told Ashley he was trying to find her an appropriate therapist near her apartment thoughtful, perhaps, although Ashley had never asked for counseling in the first place, and that was the last she heard from Lewis on the matter. According to the police officer who received Ashley's report, no one from K2 Productions ever contacted him or any other law enforcement authority. Lewis never found Ashley the appropriate therapist, either. That's when Ashley decided she was out. I no longer wanted to be affiliated with the Miss USA brand, she said with a sarcastic laugh. Ashley uploaded a video to YouTube below in hopes of spreading her story, but no one seemed to take notice. Rodriguez confirmed to Jezebel in a telephone interview that he had met Ashley in his car outside of a Tracy Starbucks in an attempt to teach her how to succeed in the modeling business. She told me she would do whatever it takes, and now she's throwing my help in her face, he said. 
He denied that he personally requested a blow job, but said that he told Ashley he knew of a magazine where young ladies can get on the cover if they do some type of sexual favors with the people at the magazine. He said he had offered the same option to other young women and that at least one had taken him up on his offer, and was doing very well. This is character assassination and it's a shame because I've helped a lot of people in the past, he said. When a young lady says she wants to find out opportunities, I'll pass the word out. He said he only met with Ashley because he was under the impression that she couldn't afford to make it in Miss California, USA. The pageant industry is expensive for young ladies, he said. I feel bad for those who dream about it but financially can't make it happen. Everyone wants to make some money somehow. Keith Lewis is currently the state director for six Miss USA pageants. He owns the franchises for Miss California USA, Miss New York USA, and Miss New Hampshire USA, as well as the respective team competitions for each state. Lewis told us that he first met Chase the Crown founder and former President Eric DeSando 25 years ago, back when the two ran their own individual talent agencies. The two publicly announced a strategic alliance in 2004, moved into the same office building, and shared some of the same employees. Soon after, both men got involved in side projects. Lewis became the state director for Miss California USA and Isando launched the Productions LLZ, the undisputed destination for young artists interested in realizing their dreams. The productions lure kids and their parents by telling them they have star potential, but, of course, the young would-be stars needed to pay thousands of dollars up front for headshots and acting classes if they wanted to be cast on Disney shows like Hannah Montana and Zoe 101. The production's talent director was Domingo Rodriguez, then known as Domingo Casanos. The Simi trio, Rodriguez, Luis, and Isando, had solidified their business relationship. In 2009, an ABC News investigation led to a widely publicized federal class action lawsuit that accused the productions of swindling over $20 million from more than 6,000 families by attempting to sidestep the state consumer protection law specifically meant to keep dubious advance fee talent agencies in check, publishing false and misleading information about its prices and services and referring clients to classes and photo shoots in exchange for pay compensation. The lawsuit, which is still pending, claimed that the contracts signed by thousands of families violate the law and cannot be enforced. Judging by multiple emails on a website devoted to detailing the production scam operation, Rodriguez has spent a significant amount of time complaining about the subsequent backlash. Now when someone looks up my name on Google it shows your stage parent attitude where you blame the talent director for whatever reasons you feel your son Arthur has not become a star, Rodriguez wrote to one parent. This is sad. Rodriguez used the email address siphoned at AOL.com, the same email address he would give girls like Ashley years later, to tell parents to keep smiling, apparently his favorite inspirational phrase. Before the bad publicity, the productions was listed on the official Miss California USA website under recruiters along with DeSando and Rodriguez's names, afterwards, DeSando's last name mysteriously switched to John. Once the discredited the productions shuddered. DeSando launched Chase the Crown, and his good pal Lewis advertised the company as the official recruitment and marketing arm for K2 Productions in a variety of official annual materials and press releases. DeSando was proud of the productions. He told Entrepreneur that he projected sales of $15 million in 2008. He was great at pageant recruiting, too, the job he held for four years, working for a variety of state directors including Lewis. Together, the duo turned the Miss California USA franchise into the largest state pageant in the Miss USA system. Under K2 Productions and Chase the Crown's partnership, Miss California USA registered over 400 contestants in 2010 and continued its meteoric rise up until last year, when the franchise once again boasted having the most registered participants for any state in the history of the pageant. But in May 2012, DeSando abruptly left. Make sure you make it clear in the article that I no longer work in recruitment, DeSando wrote in an email to Jezebel. Sorry to be a pain but there is much politics in the MUO system and I want to make sure things aren't misrepresented. Why did DeSando part ways with MUO, as he claims he did last spring, if he was doing so well? 
Lewis said he wasn't able to have a candid conversation about DeSanto's departure and would only say that it was a mutually agreeable decision and that DeSanto was not permitted to use the Miss USA or Miss Universe trademarks or interact with Miss USA girls after that time. But a source close to the issue told Jezebel under guarantee of anonymity that MU Ohio UPS told Lewis in spring 2012 that they wouldn't renew his franchise agreement if he continued to employ DeSanto as a recruiter. They had received too many serious complaints about DeSanto's behavior. According to another source, one was that he often sent girls a shirtless photo of himself posing as former congressman and notorious extra Anthony Weiner. It's not a good sign if Donald Trump doesn't want to be associated with you. DeSanto told us that while he still does some consulting for Chase the Crown, his sister now officially runs the company. But DeSanto's personal website says he still works in marketing and recruitment for K2 Productions. On November 12, around five months after Lewis supposedly severed ties with DeSanto at MUO's request, DeSanto sent out an email blast advertising model industry specialists services and wrote, I work for K2 Productions the official producer of the Miss California USA, Miss New York USA, Miss New Hampshire USA and Miss Maine USA contests. On January 25, 2013, DeSanto posted a status update on his Facebook looking for women that can speak in front of a room and have the ability to convince others those interested could email him at his Chase the Crown address. Additionally, several Miss USA franchise websites are still owned by DeSanto and are being used by K2 and Lewis as their official application pages for prospective beauty queens. Either DeSanto never stopped recruiting for his old buddy Luis, despite MUO's refusal to work with him or he wanted to work independently while using the MUO brand for personal profit. And why wouldn't he? DeSanto told Jezebel he made well into the six figures while working with MUO because he was, in his own words, the top pageant recruiter in the country. I stand out because I sell a specific concept to the girls who aren't going to win, he explained. We have to make sure those girls feel good about themselves even when they're going to fail. But technically these men can't make the girls feel good without playing by the rules. The MUO owns all rights to the Miss USA state preliminary pageants, but licenses individuals and companies to operate their state-level pageants with their Miss USA branding. If the MUO says a recruiter has to go, then the recruiter has to go. But DeSando didn't go. Lewis says K2 Productions makes all recruiters sign a code of conduct every year that uses language from the franchise agreement he is with them. MUO. Our job is to uphold the standards of the Miss Universe organization, he said. I'll lose my franchise if it's found I'm not doing that. But the men violated or attempted to violate more rules than they followed, from the way they liberally peppered their various endeavors with the Miss US aid marks without approval to the way they tried to solicit clients for their sketchy side projects to, of course, failing to uphold the outstanding reputation and image of the pageant. Further investigations go in all kinds of directions. Here's just one, DeSanto's best friend and former roommate was John B. Hawkins, the model and former Studio 54 bartender who was convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, insurance fraud and grand theft and sentenced to 25 years to life in prison for devising a scheme in the late 80s to murder a man in order to collect a $1.5 million life insurance policy. Hawkins's case was one of the largest murder cases ever solved by America's most wanted. The story was turned into a book insured for murder, and to movies. DeSanto lived with John B. Hawkins during the time that the murder was planned, allowed Hawkins to use him as an alias, according to an FBI report, and was the one who signed for the insurance payout, according to law and ordinance. According to a Columbus Dispatch article from September 1989 headed testimony of Eric DeSanto, former roommate of John B. Hawkins, full of holes, defense lawyer says, DeSanto was defensive under cross-examination and provided different accounts over the years depending on who was asking. There's no rule against hiring a convicted criminal's close associate to represent your company, and MUO wouldn't disclose the complaints that caused them to tell Lewis to tell DeSanto to step down. Instead, they gave us a statement, ultimately the franchisee is responsible for their employees as well as individuals they select to run their recruiting process and that any accusations of impropriety by anyone purporting to represent the Miss Universe organization, be it on a national level or through our state. Franchisees are taken very seriously and will be investigated.
but it doesn't seem that MUO followed up to make sure DeSanto and his cohorts were staying away. Neither did Lewis, DeSanto's longtime friend, who would only say that he is an extremely ethical and spiritual person and would never allow anything to go unchecked or enacted on by one of our vendors or their associates, as he wrote to us in an email. Everyone wants to blame someone else. And in the end, it's the broke girls looking for their big break who get screwed.